In this video, we will learn how to use a two-dimensional pattern to structure a three-dimensional space. In my video, there is a part where we intersect our two-dimensional pattern with our three-dimensional uh, space. And so it's important that uh, this is a proper polygon uh, surface with no mistakes. And what we see here on the right side, there is a pattern where every, um, every edge it hits on the corner of uh, another edge. If you see this uh, pattern, there's a little bit of a problem because here are some edges which ac actually hit the length of one um, uh, of one uh, edge. And um, we just uh, have a look at the pattern element. And uh, what you have to do is you have to select uh, the pattern element. You just uh, choose. Um, segments you choose these two segments and you just divide them i just go in my divide area of my um, editable spline i just divide them and you can just see that now we have uh, um, we share we can share a point with the length of the um, of the other object and we just do it with all our elements okay i just did it with the other ones and you can just see if i select uh, my uh, segments uh, that uh, uh, the segments is exactly between the points of uh, of this element so uh, what you can do is uh, we just uh, select all our elements and uh, we can um, now with the route mouse click already convert them to editable polys okay we want to create a pattern out of this so i just select all my polygons i just take one of the points i have my snap toggle on and uh, just choose one point move it to the corner just say number of copies 10 as a copy and i just do this into the other direction and just take it and hold my shift key and move this up and just say again number of uh, copies 10 and here we go this is my pattern surface the next thing i want to away them um, attach them all together so i just select all of them i don't want to have any other object um, attached so i just go into isolate selection toggle i just choose one of them like this go into attach the little attach list setting and here's my attached list. Uh, I just uh, say string A, select all of them, go to attach, and I have all my little elements um, uh, attached properly. If we zoom in, then it's like this that we have double edges or borders here because uh, there's the edge of the hexagon and there's the edge of this rectangle shape so uh, what we actually have to do is we just select uh, in vertice mounds all vertices and we just have a look at the amount of vertices so 2904 vertices and we just weld them together I just go into my weld settings and uh, with a distance of 0 0.1 centimeters um, after my weld, I have 1056 uh, vertices, and this is a big improvement. And uh, I expect uh, after I did this, um, I have a proper surface which I can use for, for my uh, pattern exercise. This just took a little bit longer, but now we are at the same level like the surface on the right. There are no uh, double edges, no edges which go over a double length of one object and uh, we just continue now, we just take this surface and I just move this surface on my um, space, uh, three-dimensional space and we just want to use it as uh, as a pattern like, uh, like I said at the beginning, I just scale it Okay, and I scaled it until I went, came to a point where I thought this uh, is a pattern which uh, um, is a good starting point for my uh, three-dimensional space. I just choose my snap function and I move this pattern to uh, one of the corners uh, like this. And uh, the next thing is I want to um, have the intersection of my pattern to my uh, three-dimensional dimen space and my three-dimensional space uh, has a height of 5.50 meter. 50. 
I just select my uh, three-dimensional object. I just say right mouse click and uh, go to clone and copy it uh, as uh, room subtract 001, doesn't matter what kind of a name it actually has. And um, this is just do because I want to keep the room and I want to still subtract uh, the basic shape. Really important is also that there's an intersection already with your two-dimensional pattern, otherwise uh, a Boolean operation will not work properly. Okay, let's go to create, I open a compound object Boolean. I go to add operands and uh, choose my um, my pattern and um, what you can see is I use 3D Studio 2017. Uh, here I select intersect uh, after my operation and uh, if you use an older version then you first choose intersect in your menu and then you just go into pick operands and then you end up at the same result like me. Okay, I take my object and I don't need this Boolean operation anymore. So I just say right mouse click convert to editable poly and now I just want to move it down uh, again to the base of my three dimensional space. And you can see even if I have my snap object, snap function on, I can't move it properly because the pivot point still has the pivot point of my space. So what I do is just go into how we key say effect pivot point and center to object, deselect my pivot point and now I can move my object. So select it again uh, properly to my uh, to my three-dimensional space. I just want to work with this pattern right now. So I just say isolate selection on, isolate sele selection off and on. So uh, I only have my two-dimensional uh, surface. And um, I just want to delete um, polygons uh, to uh, define the inside space. And uh, I just select some of them. For example, like this, I hold my string key and select these. And uh, also just move it. This I didn't, I didn't want. Select this one. And uh, also these three. This I deselect again. And I um, just want to have a nice structure and think a little bit about my, um, my space. I think this already looks, um, uh, looks quite, uh, quite well. This one I just keep and uh, this one I also keep, take out with my old uh, key. And this little one also has to go these two and I think uh, this looks quite good and I just delete all my polygons with delete button. Okay here we go. I already like it but there are some things I want to add. For example this one is a nice space to go on the corner and this one is a little bit like a nice uh, niche and uh, this one too. So um, I'm able to walk, uh, walk inside this one and this one and this one probably also an area where you actually can uh, can walk uh, in. Okay, here we go. And um, I just next step want to extrude my, um, my two-dimensional surface. And for this, just because it's already a polygon, I use my shell modifier. My shell modifier uh, gets an outer amount of 5.50, meter you just have to see which one actually is the height. This looks really good, 5 meter 50. And so this already fits to my space. And I can also just add segments. For example, two, uh, two segments uh, like this. Okay, if I look at my object, I think it already looks, uh, looks quite good. Okay, this was always the uh, difficult part. Uh, and now we can just uh, play with this a little bit. I just change it to uh, two segments. I just add an edit poly on top and I just go into edge. I select um, the middle edge, uh, really important. Uh, move this up a little bit without my snap function. So with S, I just deselect my uh, snap functions 
and we just see what happens if I scale my um, uh, my edges and you can just see that my room just um, uh, transforms to a uh, different kind of uh, uh, to a different kind of appearance. What I don't like so much is that also the outside wall um, uh, is uh, is changing. So what I actually have to do is um, I just go back. Um, I just go into my top view and I uh, just uh, hold my alt key. You see the little minus, and I just deselect all my outside edges like this. I just deselect all of them. Also here, deselect and here, uh, deselect and deselect these ones. And if I now go again and scale my, um, um, transform my uh, polygons, you can just see that it only has an impact on my uh, selected, uh, selected edges. Okay, I optimized it a little bit. I just selected some out, uh, outside edges and I think this already looks quite good. I don't like this shaded part because we did we did do always twice to make things slightly um, uh, roundish and uh, I just select my edges and I go into um, hard shaded mode and uh, then uh, this already looks uh, much better. And my modifier I just rename, I just call it edit poly and uh, scaled uh, walls, edges. I just added a camera in my scene and a sun system and you can already see uh, the space is definitely quite uh, extreme, but uh, uh, you can see what kind of impact um, uh, the pattern has in the, uh, in the space and you can also see uh, one of the first visualizations. I don't really have a strong design on pulse uh, on this, but you can already see that uh, in my floor plan uh, that uh, this pattern uh, feels uh, feels quite good. I just rename this and just call it pattern in space uh, version 0 0.1 and I just select it and I copy it uh, once and just call it 0 0.2 and um, I uh, just uh, hide the first one and uh, Maybe we can uh, just do some variations so you can uh, get a feeling for this whole thing a little bit. Let me go a little bit further. Next step, you can just tessellate uh, it um, even more. Just put a tessellate modifier on top. Tension definitely uh, zero. And uh, different kind of uh, options you can um, uh, you can go for. And um, just go for, um, for a really simple one. And uh, if you then, for example, just choose some polygons, for example, like these and uh, uh, these and these and probably these whole elements, uh, then you can just uh, make an inset, inset uh, by a polygon uh, like, uh, like this. And uh, next step, you can just um, uh, extrude this, for example, to the inside, and just create something like a, uh, um, like a shape situation. Okay, I changed the design uh, a little bit. This is what it looks like, and you can already see uh, what it looks like uh, with um, the visualization. And you can also see that I just um, used an open sub uh, modifier and um, here you can see what it looks like in my, um, in my visualization. And if you work on the edges that not everything is uh, smooth, uh, then you just use it with a preset. And um, this is what it looks like second in my visualization. As an alternative, you can also work uh, with the edges. I just um, just delete my top modifier, my open uh, subdivision, and um, 
also this one I delete. Uh, I just use my tessellate, uh, probably make it a little bit more interesting. And if I now put an edit poly on top and I select all my edges like this, then I can go into the next step and just say uh, create shape. I want to have a linear shape, not a smooth one. I think that's, uh, that's fine with me. Here we go. And if I choose my, um, well, I'll just take the, the basic shape and I'll just, um, uh, just uh, hide it. Hide selection. And what's left is my uh, extracted shape. And this shape just needs the dimension on top. I just added uh, a sweep modifier on top. And um, we adjusted a little bit. Uh, and uh, these little um, edges you have to adjust manually. I think you have to adjust it manually. And this is what it looks like in my visualization. It all looks a little bit extreme, but again, it's not really about the design. It's more about the principle and you can uh, imagine it much more simple. And then there's the inside of a box inside. And so it's just a structure which could carry things. Probably even more uh, successful, I just went back to my uh, basic shape and I just uh, add a lattice modifier on top. And with the lattice modifier, you can differentiate between um, the um, joints of the vertex points and uh, the struts in between. And you can also combine them. And with this, you have a lot of options uh, in terms of defining, um, defining a nice shape. And uh, you can also just put uh, the triangle uh, part in, inside and uh, uh, just the corner pieces. So I think that's also a really good way of uh, building, uh, building a structure out of your pattern. Okay, and this is what it looks like in my visualization again. The last example works with simple subtraction. I just have my basic shape. I just draw a box on top, slightly bigger than my object, um, somewhere like this. Move it a little bit so there's a clear intersection. And uh, if you have um, a Voronoi plugin installed, um, I just choose it right now. It can be any function, by the way. Uh, Voronoi plugin um, where you can make really nice Voronoi structures. I just um, increase the chunks somewhere like this. I define a gap in between. And with this, I just uh, go back to my. Um, to my basic shape. I just go into compound object, choose boolean, go into pick operands, and I just intersect these two volumes. And if I just go um, uh, put an edit poly on top, then you can choose a part of these elements. Uh, definitely, I want to go uh, do this under elements. And I just go back. and. Instead of uh, intersection, I just uh, choose subtract and choose again my um, Voronoi structure. And you can see that also out of this uh, comes a really interesting shape which you can, uh, which can define uh, your space. Thanks for watching.